Shorts are really excited to launch our newest member of the family to our oscilloscope range, the RTP a high performance oscilloscope. Now, as I said, this is our highest performance oscilloscope today and it's going to come out in a 4 gig, a 6 gig and an 8 gig model. And in 2019 we'll have more higher bandwidth models in the pipeline as well. So this product was mainly aimed for signal integrity testing if you may and this was really where we could want to try and make an innovation or make a difference if you like. Uh, so with the signal integrity tagline, we're adding something new which is called real-time signal integrity. And here we're trying to make a real difference by uh, keeping more and more performance into the instrument itself. We've added new uh, ASICs into the front, so the front-end chips if you like, that work much higher frequency than the, the scope actually is entailed to. And we actually have a lot more new things like more and more uh, multiple instruments into that one package, if you like, and also a much more compact and smaller footprint so that a lot of engineers have a lot more space, if you may, to, to work on their boards and so forth. So here we have the, uh, the RTP uh, oscilloscope uh, all working, if you may. So uh, we've got the, um, the 8 gig version here. And what I've done as a test signal is I've connected a, a USB 3.0 hard disk, if you may, into this fixture here. And I can then uh, tail on to the differential pairs going into channel 1 and channel 2 there. So the negative is going into channel 1 and the positive is going into channel 2 just there. Um, so uh, when we talk about real time and so forth, um, what we wanted to make achieve is a fast update rate, if you may. So this, as like our RTO range of scopes, has a very fast update rate and uh, hopefully that comes through in this video here as well that you can see it captures really really fast all the the bits in the stream and as I put on a second channel in and change uh, the uh, to match the the settings as my first channel you you maybe notice that there's a slight degradation in amplitude and they're not quite aligned as well uh, so one thing you can quickly see, if I, if I put the second channel into another screen there, you'll see the, the trigger point just there, and there's a bit of a skew um, in, in the second channel that comes through, and they're not quite aligned. And the reason for that is I purposely put a, a, long, uh, a short cable here into my negative side, so that's coming into the yellow trace there, and I've got a longer cable here that goes into the channel 2, um, and that's what's causing the skew or this misalignment, if you may. And something new that we've added into the scope is a, a de-embedding factor, and this is called a real-time de-embedding. Uh, now what that means is if you go into analysis here and into de-embedding, uh, this is the GUI, if you may, that, uh, that an engineer gets presented with. And here they can add clusters or, uh, or effects, if you may. So here you can add a cable, a fixture, an adapter, and so on. And uh, once you do that, you can then configure that cable based on the S-parameter data for that particular cable. Um, so previously I measured this, this long cable, if you like, uh, using a VNA. And in here, I can go and try and find my uh, S-parameter uh, data file, if you like. So here I can see my S-parameter file. I can then go into here and look at the magnitude response of that cable. I can look at the, uh, the phase response and also the group delay just down there as well. Now once I make sure that that's the right cable that I need, I can hit the enable button on the top there and then um, switch on real-time de-embedding. And uh, I'll switch on the enable and you'll see in the capture window, it takes about a few seconds until it calculates that, that, uh, the filter characteristics and you can see immediately that the, the now the skew has been taken off and it's aligned. You see there's a still uh, a, a sort of misalignment there as well between the still uh, from the channel 1 and that's because I haven't compensated even this small cable if you may. So here I can then add uh, for my channel 1 a, another cable and here now this time I'm going to go for a, a smaller length which is about a 20 centimeter. So once I do that you can see the response is completely different. Here we're only seeing a, a loss about uh, 1 dB. Uh, when you look at the 6 gig range, uh, whereas previously we were seeing a lot more. And then I can hit enable of that, switch on real-time de-embedding again, and then hit that enable. And again, you'll see this, this a few seconds wait, if you like, and then it recalculates, and then it's perfectly aligned uh, to there. And once I zoom in, you can see the, both the, the positive and the negative sides of all those bits, if you may. 
and you can see here it's still capturing it at a fastest rate if you like you can then start to do your eye diagram tests put colors on that all those signals if you may put some mass tests if you like so you can go into here um, very quickly look at one of those eyes um, put some color tables if you may into that and then try and see okay how is my signal looking like and then put maybe uh, some mass tests very very quickly with your finger just define a quick mask and then there you go you can up and running with your signals there so this has been the goal for our RTP scopes if you like that we wanted to try and make a, a scope that's very very high in performance but also not compensate on terms of usability and get uh, the users as quick as possible their results so.